Hello and welcome to the Smooth Sounds of Just-In-Time Training. And what a show we have for you today. How would you like to see 4,000 woodpeckers performing an aerial ballet while 87 gorillas and two dozen elephants do the dance of the sugar plump fairy? Well, forget it, because instead we've got bootstrapping in GCP, which in a way is like having all the excitement of everything I mentioned without having to clean up afterwards. But right now, let's get things rolling on The Muppet Show. Here is our agenda for today. We shall start with the requirements. Then we will walk through the preparation. Lastly, we will bootstrap an image. Bootstrapping a firewall in GCP requires access to the console or the CLI. We will be using the console for this demonstration. You will also need access to a PanOS 8.1 image. If using BYOL, you will need a valid VM series auth code. Lastly, you will need an XML firewall configuration file and an init-config.txt file. We start by creating a storage bucket in GCP. In the bucket, create the bootstrap folders config, content, license, software. Once the folders have been created, upload the bootstrap files to the relevant folders. For details on bootstrap package creation, consult the VM series documentation. Now let's take a closer look. Here we have a project that I created for the purposes of this demonstration. We'll go to storage and browser, click create bucket, and specify a globally unique bucket name. We also need to specify a storage class, multi-regional or regional. Regional is sufficient for most needs. Click Create, and once the bucket is created, we'll go through and we will create our folders for our bootstrap files, config, content, license, and software. I've already created one, so let's have a look at that. Here we have a two-tier bootstrap. If we click on it, we will see our four folders. Again, in the config, we've got our bootstrap.xml as well as our init-config.txt. In the content folder, we're going to have our content updates that we wish to apply at boot time. Because I'm using a BYOL instance, I will need to provide an auth code. If we wanted to, we could also put a version of PanOS to upgrade the firewall to at boot time. We're not going to be doing that at this time, but just know that it is indeed possible. Once your bootstrap package has been created and uploaded, then you're ready to begin the process of bootstrapping. Let's see what that looks like. To deploy the firewall, navigate to Compute Engine, VM Instances. Click Create Instance. You will note that there is a bunch of information that we need to specify, including not only the bootstrap folder, but also things such as CPU instances, machine type, network information, as well as SSH keys. I have one here that is ready to go. I have a name instance-1. I am deploying it to US Central 1A. By default, GCP will want to offer you a one virtual CPU instance upon which to run it. This is insufficient for the VM series. We need at least an N1 standard 4. Once we've selected that, select Customize. By using the Intel Skylake or better CPU platform, we get maximum performance from the VM series firewall. In this case, I am using a custom image that was created during the beta. Once GCP goes GA, the process will be similar. Next, what we'll do is we will specify the bootstrap information. And we do that via metadata. In this particular case, the metadata key is going to be VM series bootstrap GCE storage bucket. Don't worry about writing it down. This is going to be in the documentation. The value for this key is going to be 2 tier bootstrap, which is a bootstrap configuration that I set up earlier. The rest of these settings can be left at their defaults. Next, 
we will go up and we will click on networking. This is going to allow us to go through and attach the various interfaces to the pre-existing networks within the GCP environment. Note that management is ETH0 by default as it is in all of the cloud service providers. You also have to go through and enable IP forwarding. This is going to only be available to you on the first interface and it enables it for the entire instance. Note also that by default, the GC environment will go through and specify ephemeral IP address settings. This is typically fine under most circumstances. It will also go through and want to assign an external or public IP address to everything. This is fine for the management and the external interface, but it's probably not going to be wanted for the trust side interface. Consequently, we need to go in and we need to set that to none so that the inside interface of the firewall does not accidentally get a public IP address. The last thing that we will do is go through and specify SSH keys. Use your public SSH key that gets put onto the firewall at deployment time. This is necessary because, like AWS, GCP does not have a default administrative password. You have to use an SSH key for the initial connection so that you can set the password and get to it. Once all that information has been specified, click Create. System will go through and do any final sanity checks and kick off the process of deploying the firewall. Rather than sit here and watch the paint dry, we will have a short intermission while we wait for the instance to complete deployment. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. Now that the firewall has completed bootstrapping, we can log in and have a look around. We can see that it's gotten a serial number. It's upgraded the apps as well as the antivirus. If we hop over to the policies tab, we can see that it's completed the process of pulling in the initial policy. So we have a firewall that is essentially ready to go. This concludes our demonstration of bootstrapping in the Google Cloud Platform environment. Thank you and please do not hesitate to send us feedback.